Our scripture reading found today is found in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 through 14. In Christ, we are chosen to be God's people. God had already planned for us to be his people because of that is what he wanted. And he is the one who makes everything agree with what he decides and wants. We Jews were the first hope in Christ. And we are chosen, we were chosen so that we would bring praise to God in all of his glory. It is the same with you. You heard the true message, the good news about the way God saves you. And when you heard that good news, you believed in Christ. And in Christ, God put his special mark on you by giving you the Holy Spirit that he promised. The Spirit is the first payment that, we, that guarantees that we will get all of God has for us. Then we will enjoy complete freedom as people who belong to him. The goal for all of us is the praise of God in all of his glory. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, this morning we're going to be talking about the U.M. Army experience, but I want to ask a question. How many of you have already uh, participated at some point, not necessarily this year, but have been a part of the U.M. Army? Just raise your hand. Okay, so this is, uh, we're going to be talking about some things that are, are familiar, but um, one of the things that happens uh, at the uh, UM Army is at the end of the week, uh, the, the last night, Friday evening, uh, uh, youth and adults gather, uh, and different camps do it different ways. In our case, we had the entire camp together, somewhere between 60 and 75 people in a circle, and one by one, uh, we each had an opportunity to say something. And during that time, one of the comments that regularly came up, I'm not going to say everybody said it, but uh, enough people said it that uh, it was, uh, it was a, a recurring thing. And this is what they said. When I, uh, when I first arrived, I didn't want to be here. And, uh, and I'll be honest, I was one of those who said that. You know, on Sunday evening... When I arrived, I didn't want to be there because I was too worried about things not coming out the way uh, that I had planned and that I hadn't planned enough and that I had missed something and, and I was just, uh, I arrived tired and worried. But something happened between Sunday when we arrived and Saturday when we left. So the youth are going to share and some adults are going to share some of their experiences and at the end of that, then I'm going to go ahead and open it up for a couple of questions, and then we'll continue our time of worship. So I've been to about six UM Armies, and uh, with UM Army, you get your, uh, when you first get there, you get in, placed into a work team, and I was part of the green team. I think there was about five or six other teams there. And so my story is when, uh, when we got to our site, like we were, uh, told to go uh, make sure our client was there so he knew what we'd be doing there. And so, like, we went up to the door, knocked, and rang the doorbell, and he, like, wasn't there and didn't answer. So we got his sister on the phone, who was the actual owner of the house, and she uh, told us what we'd be doing, and we'd be uh, replacing his porch because, it like, all the plywood had been rotted away there. And so uh, we start, we move all the stuff from the porch and we start ripping the plywood from the beams. And about halfway through ripping, uh, ripping up the plywood, just a, a man comes in through the side gate and he's like, uh, what are y'all doing here? And uh, I think after five seconds of silence, Jimmy says, uh, we're part of your Mari, we're gonna fix your porch. Uh, and after he heard that, uh, it turns out he was our client, and he was just very thankful for us being there. And uh, just every day after that would give us popsicles and, and just show how thankful he, he was. And by the end of the week, we had replaced his whole porch and painted all of it so it would stay longer. And it just looked really good, and he was extremely thankful for it. A 
Okay, so this is my third UM Army, and I always enjoy going to UM Armies because they, they're just so much fun for me. And so this time we, I went to a site, and it was lots of, lots of painting. We did lots and lots of painting. And uh, you have different color groups, and my color, color group was the purple team, and purple team is the best team. I'm just saying that now. And it's always the best. It's, it's the best team. So anyway, we, were, we went to our site, and um, the bottom of his house, of our, our client's house, was um, it was rotting on the side. So we had to replace the wood on the bottom. And we, you know, we primed it, and we painted it. And there was, there was just a lot of painting involved. But anyway, we, um, they, they were, when we got there, they were just so grateful for what we were doing. And they just thanked us repeatedly, like, thank you for this. We, we really needed this. Thank you for coming. And they gave us, like, Gatorades, like, the whole entire week. We got tons of Gatorades, and, and we got tons of chips and everything. We were coming back, and we were telling everybody, we're like, hey, we, we're the best team. We got, we got Doritos. <laughs> it, was, it was really good. And so um, we really enjoyed that. And they told us Santiago was our client, and his daughter was kind of mainly in charge of everything. Um, keeping everything together and she says okay since you're just doing so much for us we're gonna get you lunch we're gonna get you lunch on Wednesday and so all of us going yes yes we don't have to make those sandwiches we don't have to make the, those nasty you know brown bag lunches and so <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were um, we were really looking forward to Wednesday and finally like Wednesday came we were we were doing tons of work we got you know like half the side painted and we were doing really well and lunchtime came around and she brings out like two bags full of church's chicken and sets it on the table and here's mashed potatoes and biscuits and it, it was really good and um and anyway when we do a devotional at lunch and so we were talking we we're just talking about this segment that day that we were doing and um santiago's daughter starts talking about um santiago's religion and his christianity and how it's like impacted his life and it was really, it was just really inspiring. His stories, which I'm going to share with you, are, are just very moving. And um, the first one, he, she talked about him going to the gas station, just the local gas station in Mercedes. And he would be just filling up gas and just walk up to somebody who was filling their gas tank as well and just tell them about their life. And he doesn't even know, he doesn't even know this person. And he would just talk about them in their life and their problems and say, you're going to get through this. Like, and they're just so baffled by the idea, like, you know me, like, you know my story, blah, blah, blah. And he, he was like, yes, I know you will get through this. And it, it was just incredible, like, hearing that, like, you just walk up to a stranger and he's just telling you that. And it was, that was really inspiring. And the other one is she, she went to church that morning. And she was, after the service was over, the pastor came up to her and says, someone was crowned by the angel of God. And she, she was like, wow, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. And she went, she went and go t tell her dad, Santiago, hey, there was, there was a person who was crowned by the angel of God today. And he was like, that was me. That was me who was crowned by the angel of God. And it's just inspiring to, to hear his story. And throughout that Throughout that, that Wednesday when we were doing that devotional, it was just the biggest part of our mission of my mission trip that we went on. And it it was great and we had we had biscuits, we had subway cookies. They were really good. <laughs> and and we tears were shed and it was just a very moving, very moving time. So thank you. So this was probably my sixth UM Army I went to, and uh, I was part of the yellow team, which is the best team. <laughs> it is. We were pretty the smallest team, but we had the most jobs. We had four jobs, and uh, there was three kind of small ones and one big one. It was taping and floating a house. And if any of you have done that, you know the slow process that it is of just taping a, taping a seam, putting mud over it, letting it dry, and then putting mud over it again. Three and a half days. Whew. And then uh, 
the people that owned the house and what you were doing, they were so kind to us. They were thankful. And the lady said, I want to make you lunch one day. And we're like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll take it. Made us homemade enchiladas. They were delicious. I ate like four. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, there were three other houses. We went to uh, two houses and a church. One house um, had, a, it was a lot of families in that house. There was, it was a family, it was a big family. And we had to put drywall in a bathroom. And uh, well, they, we, the bathroom was like an oven in there, so we only had like two people working. The other people were cleaning up their yard, and the, the owners were helping us, the kids were helping us, and those, the kids were amazing. They were so, they were kind, they were fun to play with. Uh, we played some basketball with them. I lost. I can't play basketball. Um, <laughs> well, uh, we, um, and so we got that, we got it done. They were helpful, they were thankful for us. We went over to a church and a house, which were right next to each other. Um, so we had some people working in the church where we had to replace an air conditioning unit and uh, well that was the instructions were a bit difficult and the screws were a bit difficult to put in it's angles and uh, we had some people working over there and another person we had this lady who uh, it was a grandmother living with her three kids and um, and her husband and the lady was, she was funny, she was kind, and she, she didn't ask for much, and she was glad for what she had. And uh, we had to replace some stairs, we had to put a screen door in, and uh, she, was, she was like, oh, thank you so much. Uh, she was thankful, and she, uh, the, the husband was, thank you so much. Uh, we got him. Um, we had a, uh, and, uh, it was like, now we have cool air through the house. And uh, it was great, it was, all these people are so kind that we work with, and uh, Another thing about the UM Army is uh, kind of at the end of the week, we do this thing called a prayer walk. And there's stations in, like there's, it's this long, it's this uh, kind of meditation thing where they have stations that you go through outside and uh, you go through them and you th reflect on the week and what you've done and uh, stuff like that. And uh, well, it just, it makes you think about what, I'm here to do good. I'm here to do God's work. And well, I'm happy for what I do, and I'm glad that I'm doing this. So, I'm Blake, and this has been a certain number of UM armies for me. I, can't, I don't know at this point. But um, we, we came down there, and I got... The, uh, the site uh, my team was going to be working on is going, was going to involve like building a ramp and then replacing a window and a few other things on the side of the house. And I figured, okay, you know, I've done, a, I've done a ramp before. It shouldn't be too difficult. And we get there and we find out it's never, it's never simple. <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, the most UM armies, you have the, a sort of order of um, instructions that are sent down. You got you usually have a color group that has two different teams in them with uh, two adults per team and they are working on different sides and there's one color group leader that will like go between these two to three teams and you know he, the color group leader is usually the one who knows you know what construction is like. Usually we bring Ray, Ray Jacobson along for that or Dan McQuistian is usually one of those regulars who does that and the thing is, this camp was a little different. Um, we had a good, like, six or seven teams, and there wasn't that many adults there, so it was just two guys, Ray Jacobson and some, someone else, who were the, you know, people who went around and knew a lot about construction and stuff. And so with the, th the thing with my side is um, we didn't see Ray all that much. He was busy on other places, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, at some point, it was mistaken my wanting to, you know, get going and wanting someone to tell me what to do so we can get this site on the roll. That was mistaken for me knowing what I'm doing, which I didn't. And um, so, it sort of became where we had one adult who, sort of, who knew what he was doing, he was pretty good, another who didn't really. So, I was sort of 
in charge of the ramp area and the other adult was in charge of the side house area. So I was constantly just running back and forth between there trying to figure out what I'm doing and trying to tell other people what to do because I was apparently in charge of something. And um, uh, so uh, I would be madly running back and forth and there's, we were in a Hispanic neighborhood with a bunch of kids who would come out and they saw a bunch of high schoolers, you know, uh, with power tools and w came over and wondered what's, what was happening and stuff. So there was one kid who, you know, half spoke English, half spoke Spanish. You, uh, you could barely tell. And he asked some, another person on our site, like, who's that kid r madly running, you know, back and forth? <laughs> um, they're like, oh, that's Blake. And so I just, I'm just keep going, just trying to get this ramp done. He's just getting angrier at it as it gets, as it has more and more problems. And randomly, after this kid knew who I was, he's just like, hey, Blake. I'm like, oh, hi, kid. And um, <laughs> he's like, you're cool. Like, like, oh, that was very nice. And it, it started to show that you're impacting more than the, more than just the, um, the person who owned the house. You're impacting more than just her, who, who you are impacting very much, because you know she was missing a leg and needed this ramp, and it was very important that she got it. And uh, but you're also showing, you know, people around them what it's like to be Christian. You know, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And you, the other main thing is you take, as you, you toil and you strive over, you know, these duties, you, you make relations with other Christians. And to the point where when this Friday I was in Austin and I randomly ran into one of them and <laughs> started talking to him like it was this, we were back at camp. And it's to sort of answer Tom's question, those are the reasons why you amar me, why you keep going is... You know, you, you impact people and you, you start to see that impact and also you make relations with these other Christians and to help you grow in your faith. So. Uh, I'm Bam Christian. I went as a uh, color group leader, purple group, <laughs> Haley's group. We had a great time, so much fun working with the kids. Uh, it's really difficult to get up here and start talking about the mission trip and find a place to stop because it's, it's such a rich experience. It's like the best time spent you could have. The friendships that you make, the, uh, the, the worshiping you do with the group, it draws you so much closer to, to God, to Christ. Um, and uh, it, it, it enables me to feel really good about myself and the world and the kids in the world today. It's just, uh, it's the first time I've been on a mission trip that, with the kids that I didn't have my own kids going, which uh, I thought I wouldn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and I resisted at first, I really did. I, I was worried about my personal finances, my personal health, it's, it's quite a strain. And it's hot, it's hard work, and the kids, they keep going, but the schedules, long, long days, you worshiping early in the morning and late at night. But it's, it's really magic the way God finds a way to make everything work out. Um, you find the energy, life is just so much better for the experience. And uh, the thing that I keep hearing over and over from the adults is how sad it is that as children we didn't have this opportunity to go and serve. I think we're building a generation of uh, young Christians that are, are going to keep the church vital for a long time. I'm very grateful for the opportunity to serve. Hi, my name is Jimmy Blackwell. Uh, and uh, this, this was actually my, my first U.M. Army uh, trip ever. I was I was I was quite ex I was quite excited because my my youth group when growing up my youth group was tiny uh, it was like uh, uh, 
I, I think I constituted a third of my youth group when I, when I came. And so I, I was really excited to see where all these youth are congregating and what they're doing and kind of thing. Uh, but one of the things that... Oh, I was in Brasses' group, by the way, green team. We had no illusions who we were. <laughs> we were us. And that porch did get built. So there we go. It was awesome. But uh, I, I believe I even shared this on the, the Friday night when we had testimonials, is that uh, uh, one, one of the pastor ladies there was talking about that idea that, uh, that youth are the, are the future of the church. And, uh, and she, was, she, she was like, that's, that's very true. But one of the ways that she liked to phrase it was that youth are the church. And the thing I liked about UM Army, I mean, we're a church here. We know each other. You know, you, 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 you live your lives together here. But at UM Army, a lot of times you're running into people you don't know from Adam. You don't know them at all. It's the first few days. It's very awkward. But when you get to the end of the week, you're a church together. The only, the only requirement to build that church, to build that community, is that it's two or three gathered together in the name of Christ, and you're able to do amazing things. Then the programming was great. Uh, the stuff we did, the prayer walks, the, the little games, the works, uh, but I can tell you, I'll, that wasn't all of it. The, probably my favorite part uh, where we really came kind of together as Green Group was uh, when they were doing a scavenger hunt and you had two drivers who were really anxious of driving in a town and this was a race and it was terrifying. It was, it was, it was, it was tense. Uh, and the, the, it was great because someone in the back, back of the seat, I don't know who it was, I don't know if it was Brassus or Alyssa or whoever, uh, I hear this voice go, hey, why don't we go to Dairy Queen? And we're like, yeah. Let's go Dairy Queen. And then together we just went to Dairy Queen. We met a pastor there. Uh, we bonded. Uh, and so that was my, my experience at UM Army. It was church among strangers who were Christians. And so uh, the, 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 it's a psalm I had uh, prepared, uh, 133, where it says, uh, it is a good and joyful thing when brethren dwell together in unity. And uh, I was talking with Wendell uh, earlier last week, and he was saying, you know, it's great that we form these relationships, but part of the beauty is, is that they're precious even when they're temporary. That you build these relationships and then you move on. Uh, that, that God's story is bigger than just our story, but there's recognition whenever we live in it together. I just want to say one of the things, when I first got here and, and he talked about UM Army and that, that experience, I, I hadn't even heard of UM Army, but it's a part of the DNA of this, of this congregation. Uh, and, and the things that I liked about it right off, I mean, there's basically four ingredients. One is there's fun, and, you know, that's, that's, we want to enjoy our experience. Uh, but that's not all there is. It's not, it's not Fiesta Texas every, every day. It's, it's also a service. And as uh, Haley and I shared, it, it was hot every single day, really hot every single day. And, uh, and then there's worship, that every day uh, worship happened in the morning and in, in our devotionals in the morning and in the evening. And the kids got together at lunch and did devotionals. So there's this this uh, definite spiritual aspect, uh, and then uh, and then finally, uh, there's there's responsibility. The kids had responsibility every single day. There was not a day that went by that that uh, this 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 group of kids and and adults uh, every single day they had something they were responsible for, and it helps to to develop leadership. So, um, real quickly. Two questions, and who, uh, who has a question? Sure. 
Judy. How were the sites selected? Um, well, I've been on sort of a behind the scenes thing, a version of UM Army where I worked with the people who do that. And basically, way before we get there, there's a camp director and a sites person who go and they talk to like, we're, we're actually going to be having one here next year, next summer. So they'll come, they'll talk to like Richard and um, the local pastor and find out where, where they know the need is. They'll get in touch with probably local uh, charities, you know, probably get in touch with Barnabas Connection when they're coming here and just try and figure out where the need is. And then they'll also try and get the word out to where if you have something you can like give them a call and then they'll go out and look at each site and figure, you know, that's something we can do. No, that's not something we can do. We don't want to be touching electrical lines and stuff. And, and one of the things too is, is that they connect with the uh, local community leadership. I know uh, in, in one, one place in Mathis, it was the Catholic Church was one of the main resources along with the, the you know, in, in both places, uh, uh, it seems like the mayor and the, the sheriff and or uh, police chief was in, in, involved in, in saying, oh yeah, we know of this, this family here. And it's not, uh, it's a, we go into a community, we don't go into a congregation, meaning we go, went into the community of Mercedes and whether they were United Methodist or Catholic or non-denominational or not a church at all, we went in, into places as opposed to we're just going in to fix the church people's uh, things. One more question. Jan. You better answer that one because I would, United Methodist Action, Action Reach Out Mission by Youth. Really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> Let's uh, bow for a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for uh, a congregation that has been uh, very much a part of the UM Army experience. Thank you for uh, the adults and youth who have, who have gone in the past and who went this summer. Also, we are grateful that uh, there are those who haven't been able to go, but who have financially helped to make sure that uh, young people had this opportunity. And we are grateful for uh, this day to share with this congregation uh, their part in making uh, a very special summer event take place. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now may the grace of God be with you. May the love of Christ fill your hearts. May the Spirit guide your steps so that today and always you may be the church. Go and be the church. Amen. Amen.